So now that we've understood what a memory or a cache hierarchy is, let's look at why it actually works and what is the potential benefit. So, so the reason that caches work is because of this notion of locality. And you can have temporal locality as well as spatial locality. Temporal locality refers to the fact that if I've just accessed element A, there's a good chance that I'm going to revisit and access the same element sometime later. So in the near future, I'm going to touch A once again. What spatial locality refers to is that if I've touched element A in the very near future, I'm going to touch its neighboring elements as well. So I might touch element A plus 1 or A plus 2, A plus 3 and so on. So caches take advantage of both temporal locality and spatial locality. When you bring in data and you hang on to the most recently accessed data, you're hoping that I'm going to touch A and then before I throw A out of the cache, I'm going to touch A again. Right? And if I touch A in the very near future, I am going to find it in cache, and so that leads to a much lower access time. So I'm depending on temporal locality to have a high hit rate in my cache. What I also do is when I'm bringing something from memory, right? so you do a load instruction, you're trying to access something in that address bringing, and bringing that value into register $1. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to bring in a 32-bit value into this register. right? So I'm only trying to get four bytes worth of data. And if I don't find it in cache, I go to memory and I get the data from memory. But usually, I just don't fetch four bytes from memory. I bring in those four bytes as well as its neighboring bytes. So usually, when you are getting something from memory, you bring things at the granularity of 64 bytes. So in addition to fetching element A, which is a four byte unit, you end up fetching a whole bunch of neighboring bytes as well. And so if you touch those neighboring bytes in the, in the near future, which is the expected case with spatial locality, then you end up having cache hits for all of those other neighboring elements. So because programs exhibit both temporal locality and spatial locality, caches tend to have fairly high hit rates. So now let's kind of reason about the expected benefit in terms of performance. So if I did not have any kind of cache hierarchy, right? if I was doing a load and I had to always get data from memory, every single data access is going to cost me 300 cycles. Right? And that's really slow. That means every load is introducing roughly 300 stall cycles. So now I introduce an L1 cache. In this case, I introduce a 32 kilobyte L1 cache. It can be accessed in a single cycle. And it turns out that on average across a wide set of programs that are all running for a, for a long time, it turns out that your L1 cache hit rate is as high as about 90% or 95%. So with the 95% hit rate, what does my average latency for a load become? Right. So I said that without a hierarchy, your load latency is roughly 300 cycles. Turns out that with a cache, you can bring that latency all the way down to 16 cycles. So how would I get the 16 number? Let's say that I'm executing 100 loads. Out of those 100 loads, 95 of them are going to be cache hits, right? Because of this 95% hit rate. So those 95 accesses are going to be serviced in a single cycle. So it's not going to introduce any additional stall cycles in my five stage pipeline. But out of those accesses, five of them are not going to find data in the L1 cache. So in addition to spending that one cycle looking up the L1, you're going to spend 300 more cycles getting the data from memory. Okay, so on average, a load is going to take 16 cycles, right, based on this equation here. This means that loads in general are pretty expensive, right? If you just had a one level hierarchy where you access L1 and then if you access memory after that, that results in, you know, having to spend at least 15 cycles on average per load stalling your pipeline, right? So it's pretty expensive and this kind of emphasizes the fact that the memory system is a key bottleneck in modern systems. So it's really important to optimize this memory system in addition to designing a fancy processor with out-of-order execution and pipelining and so on.